morning and welcome to the core connection i'm mira rubin here with you on enlightened world network and today we're going to speak about the process of release and and it's another interesting word because it um it includes both it includes the action that results in the experience of release. But we'll, we'll talk more about that in a minute or two. But before we get started, let's take a minute to get present. Let's take a deep breath in through your nose and hold it. And imagine clean, crisp oxygen flooding into your lungs, flowing into your bloodstream, nourishing all your cells and your organs and bringing vital life energy to your body and being. And as you exhale, exhale any tension, stress, negativity, fatigue. And now let's take another deep breath in through your nose and hold it. This time, imagine brilliant, bright light lighting you up from the inside out, illuminating, electrifying, energizing all your cells and your molecules and your electrons, and just creating this brilliant beam of light from your heart out into the world. And as you exhale, exhale any tension, stress, negativity, fatigue, and let's now gently press our palms together. Just very softly rub your fingers against your palms to feel the wonderful sensation of, of your physical body interacting with itself and the world. Uh, and bring yourselves present right here, right now for another morning conversation. So we're talking today about release. And, um, you know, uh, what, what, do, what does it mean to release our grip? You know, we hold things so tightly. Um, and we hold tightly to our beliefs, to our um, identities, to our things. And typically when we release that grip, we experience a sense of freedom and um, the grip that we were having on those things is so often those things having a grip on us and when we release that grip we experience a release we experience a freedom a letting go an expansiveness Oh my, I apologize. I have not been sleeping well. And so um, my, my tiredness is catching up with me periodically. Anyway, um, talking about release. So I, I think, and, and while we're at it, we can talk about the word grip. I am having, I love words and I'm having such fun exploring with you how so many of the words that we've been exploring recently have a dual meaning, like that they are a, an action that, as well as a result. So there's the action of release and there's the result of that action that is also release or freedom. And, um, you know, I, I think it's pretty cool that both of those meanings are embedded in this word and, and the same kind of dynamic exists in so many other words. It's just, I, I never realized it before we started playing with these words. Anyway, um, release on the one side, you know, implies holding on. Right. And that's something that so many of us do. We hold on to, as I said, our, our possessions, our ideas, our, our identities. Right. And the other side of holding on is letting go, which is also release. Um, and the implication 
it well i just i just find it so fascinating that the things that we're holding on to are holding on to uh, they they grip us the things that we're gripping are gripping us um that that uh we get we get owned by the things we own in so many ways uh, i'm in the process of decluttering and and releasing lots of uh, possessions that I've accumulated over time and um, it's it's interesting to be recognizing that some of these things have a greater pull for me than others you know that that some of these things it's it's a bat it's it's like a battle it's a uh, a wrestling match to um, get to the place to be able to release, to release or not to release? That is the question. So I just want to say that I don't know if you guys are putting in any comments. I haven't seen any comments and that's why I haven't responded. Um, if you are commenting, please don't think that I'm ignoring you. I'm not. I just don't see, I don't see anything in the chat here. So um, this whole notion of of release, when we think about a release, at least when I think about release, what the physical aspects of it that arise for me are a release of tension in the shoulders, for example, the uh, ability to breathe more easily. So in this in this gripping or this holding on, what we what we experience oftentimes is attention, you know, like the, the, the gripping of our bodies as we're holding on tightly to something, right? And when we release, the shoulders go down, our, our chest expands, our belly loosens, we're able to, to experience life more fully. So that's another, it's another irony or paradox is that in, in um, letting go, we have the ability to receive in, in a more organic way. You know, like if I'm all tensed up, there's not room for anything. You know, here I am, I'm all defended. There's not room for anything to get in. And then as I release, there's an openness and it allows for the flow of energy and possibility and um i think we we live these paradoxes without ever recognizing them in so many cases so that's one of the reasons i really enjoy this time with you because it it allows me to broaden my awareness as well and um to get a a broader perspective on some of these experiences and, um, you know, brings conscious certain awareness. So I think that that's always a benefit. Anyway, when we talk about, I, I'm gonna just check to make sure we're live here because I'm not seeing any comments. So we'll see you in a second. And hopefully we're live, yep. We're live, but no comments. So um, anyway, please don't don't think I'm ignoring you. I just have not yet seen any comments in the chat. Anyway, um, what are the things in your life that you might be gripping that really have a grip on you? So um, possessions you know this is this is so, something i've been uh looking at i i really was entertaining for the longest time and intending for the longest time to be clearing out my space and um i realized that the things that i was holding on to had a hold on me and still do in, in many respects, you know, there's um, a making progress, you'll be, I, I don't know if it, if it 
uh, I'm proud to know that I'm making some progress, but um, so far, most of the attention has been on closets and um, spaces that aren't as visible. So the shifts in my my scene environment are not as um, dramatic yet as I look forward to them being. Uh, and and there's a gradual transformation around around um, or in my space that is allowing it to be a natural process, shall we say, rather than than having it happen just like that. And I think we can take that idea into the idea of release as well, that maybe release is a practice, that it's not once and done, but that it's a practice we get to explore and expand and and maybe do it in a gradual way. I mean, sometimes release is profound and uh, dramatic um, and and it can also be a gradual process of growth and transformation. So, so many of us I know are on a, a spiritual path and path of evolution, looking to release old patterns that have kept us bound and constrained. And, um, and we do this often in a gradual way, such that when we look back over time, we can see that there's been a radical transformation, but in the process, we might not have even noticed the changes because they were they were incremental and and gradual. And um, I think we get to give ourselves some grace around around our process. Um, part of that part of that is to allow ourselves to acclimate to the changes that we go through. What, I, what I've noticed in transformational work, when, when I first learned NLP, which is Neuro Linguistic Programming, when I first learned, one of the things that we were schooled in, that we were drilled into, was recognition of the importance of ecology. And ecology, is in this context, looking at the holistic picture of the individual to recognize whether the change that is being brought about is a change that is workable for them within their, their system whether it's internal or their even their external surrounding environment. So what that means, or, or an example might be, let's say someone is in an environment that is destructive, a destructive environment, and um, the intention is to get out of that environment and without a support system to be pulling out the support from underneath that person that existed in the destructive environment. In other words, to just say, okay, you're out of there and, you know, be free. Um, then without support, that can create more damage than the destructive environment was creating. Um, in the long term, right? So e ecology in that example would be 
setting up provisions to be able to make a transition, a healthy transition. So there's always a balancing factor, um, but so for instance, let's say I, I as a, an extreme example, let's say I have one pair of pants, I have one set of clothing and I really don't like it. If I release that clothing before finding an alternative, then I am naked and that's not necessarily the most beneficial thing when it's cold outside, right? So I want to be able to ecologically um, navigate the, the timing or degree of, of this release and transformation. And we're often really eager to have our result now or 10 minutes ago. And um, we often get impatient because we, we want change and yet change in and of itself can be profoundly disruptive and it's important, it's important to calibrate to our um, to calibrate to our um, tolerance for change. You know, something can change so radically that even though it might be a positive change, it can be tremendously disorienting and have all kinds of ramifications that we might not have anticipated. We hear this about, at least the, it used to be the stories that we would hear about people winning the lottery and how it ruined their lives, you know, because they weren't prepared for that kind of wealth and the things that were, that came along with it. Um, they're, own ecology didn't support that disruptive and uh, radical a change. And um, so to get back to this notion of release, letting go, releasing something, providing a release for ourselves, what's that like? And again, no comments, guys. So I don't understand what's happening, but um, Please don't think that I'm ignoring you. I miss you. I really like having the interaction from you. It, it uh, takes our conversation into very interesting and enriching directions. Here I am babbling all by myself. Um, yeah, so this notion of, um, of things, having a hold on us, you know, like the things we hold on to having a hold on us. Uh, I, I think that there's something very interesting in exploring that dynamic. It's not like the things have any intentionality, right? Um, but when, when we have attachment, that attachment is, is a, a barrier to our freedom, right? Uh, to, so, so I guess the question, the question that I'm pondering is, can we have things without the things having us you know can we this is another thing can we possess things without things possessing us and um or being possessed by those things and uh i think it's a really interesting balancing act to to be present in life, to be enjoying life, and to be connected and engaged 
and at the same time to be unattached, to be in a process of allowing, in a process of presence uh, where we can allow things to flow. So it's we can enjoy things that we have and as those things pass from our possession or presence that that we can allow them to move on easily um i i know with with maggie around i learned i learned to um deepen my non-attachment i was very attached to maggie i was but um i was able to lessen release again our, there's our word release my attachment to a lot of things because oh my gosh that little bird person was so destructive she just she just would um drop things on the floor deliberately uh she ate pretty much everything <laughs> you know she um she was she was a force of nature for sure um so when we talk about release we talk about um i i think it moves into a um a letting go a non-attachment to experience the release in our bodies you know like release the tension what's that like what's it, what is it that we're holding on to right release the tension and then at, we experience a release we experience a um an openness and and the word release typically as we think about it is a singular moment a singular event uh you know i i had a release or i released that and that was the end of it and i'm wondering it what happens if we look at release as an ongoing process so like letting go letting go has more of a process feel about it than release does but um, if we can keep reminding ourselves to release, because what happens is we release and then slowly, 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 what happens is that we bring back our attachments. Or at least I've seen that dynamic for myself. I don't know if you get, you have that same experience. But um, if we can think of release as a process, you know, to remind ourselves again and again to come back to that place of, uh, of release and letting go. I notice, I notice this process with my shoulders. Like sometimes I notice that that tension is building in my shoulders and they're rising and I get to remind myself to release them. And um, so what happens, how does life shift if we bring the notion of release into an ongoing process. What what is that like to be presencing ourselves to we can say the letting go. That's a more I I, I in a way I think the um, the words letting go might be more charged because they're so frequently used. You know, just let go. Well, if I knew how to just let go, <laughs> right? If I knew how to, I would. Um, so I'm thinking release, you know, to give ourselves that experience of release. Uh, what comes to mind for me is freedom and ease. And um, we can all use a bit more ease, correct? And uh i i i'm just thinking of all these words letting go and release and grip 
all of these things, they're, they're dynamic words, you know, they're the, the grip that we have on something and it's gripping us, you know, then the, the noun and the verb, I'm gripping something that's gripping me. Uh, I'm releasing something and experiencing release. Um, I just find it endlessly fascinating. Anyway, I'm so sorry that I didn't see any comments today to interact with you. And um, I so appreciate you and this time that we have together. And I not having comments today reminds me even more vividly how much I appreciate all of you. And uh, I think that's it for this morning. I'm Mira Rubin. This is The Core Connection. And I go live each weekday morning here on the Enlightened World Network Facebook page at 9 a.m. Eastern. Please check out the other awesome programming on Enlightened World Network and EWN, One with the Earth, Enlightened World Living. And I wish you a wonderful weekend and pleasant and rewarding release and uh until next time have a great weekend